Okay, today I am going to show you how to create a simple infographic in InDesign. We're going to create something that looks like this, but I'm going to show you how to make it from scratch. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to minus this, and when you open InDesign, you may get a big box out here that talks about, um, that has a little thing that says um, New Document. But I'm going to go to File, New, Document. So if you don't see it, it goes right here too. And it's asking you what size you want, how many columns. We're just going to have a letter size and say OK, and you'll get out a blank piece of paper like this. Right now my other one is in a tab, so I can kind of flip back and forth between the two. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to start with the grid. We're going to create this part right here. So I'm going to get a um, shape tool. This is the rectangle tool. It's right over here on your toolbar. And I need to leave a little room here for a headline, so I'm going to just um, drag down and kind of fill the page. Now before I let go of my mouse, I'm going to use the up arrow and hit that twice, and I'm going to use the right arrow and hit that twice, and I'm going to create a grid. So there's nine boxes here. Now I don't want to keep making boxes, so I've got to get off of this button, and I'm going to hit the selection tool. Basically what that does is allow me to select certain boxes that I want to use. Right now, I want to um, double up some of my boxes. So I'm going to get rid of this box. I'm just going to select it so it's got the lines around it and hit delete. And then using my black arrow tool again, if I click on the edge of the box, it gives me those, those lines. I'm going to just drag it and you'll see See this little green line? It shows me that that's even with the other one. So I'm just going to make it double the size. I'm going to do the same down here. I'm going to delete this box and I'm going to stretch this one bigger until I see that green line that tells me I'm lined up. Okay. So I've got a couple that are a little bigger. So it's not just a pure grid. It's got a little, a couple extra boxes. Okay. Um, I need to make a headline, some kind of title for my graphic. Let me look to see what we did over here. I wrote six facts you didn't know about the internet. Okay, the way I did that is I went to my T tool, that's my typing tool, and I put the six by itself. Sometimes it's easier for me to do things out here on the sides than it is to just build it in here. If you are seeing, let me see if I can show you a different view. Sometimes you can, um, I guess I'm thinking of Photoshop. So you should be seeing it just as I am. You should be able to see this. Now there is a preview mode here that will just show you what it looks like printed. So in that case, you may not see the things on the side. Those are the two buttons down here on the bottom. But first, let's, let's write our number six. So I'm going to write a six here. Now at this moment, I can tell this is 12 points. It's very small, and it's in the font Minion Pro. I'm going to use impact for my font, so if you scroll down, all of your fonts are alphabetized, or if I hit the I, it takes me to that part of the alphabet, I just know that this is the font I want, so it's impact, and I'm going to make that about 40, well, let's see, what happens if I took it all the way to 72? Let's make it really big. Maybe that's big enough. I'm going to take it. I'm going to make my box just a little smaller. I have to use the black arrow to resize things. And if I kind of grab it in the middle and drag, I can get it over there. So 72 points looks pretty good. I can use my up down arrow to kind of nudge things into place too. Okay, now I want to put another text box over here. So if I drag it out, I'm going to kind of fill up my space with it. I don't want Minion Pro. For some reason, it's just set that way. If I click on these arrows right next to my font, and you need to be on the typing tool, it, if you're seeing this, then you're on the paragraph mode, which shows um, alignment. But click on the little A, and you should see your fonts and the sizes. So if I click on it, impact is right here at the top. So I'm just going to click on that, and let's make it like 48 points. Let's see. Six facts you didn't know about the internet. Now, I don't, I can't see what I wrote, so I'm going to take my box. I'm going to stretch it bigger. Okay, and I misspelled internet, so I just need to get rid of that. Now, one thing I'm noticing is there's a big gap between this 
line and this line and I don't want that now when if you're in Word you can go to you know single space double space InDesign doesn't do that it allows you greater creativity to squeeze these things together my font is 48 but it's showing me right underneath it my spacing is 57 I'm gonna make them both 48 and it squeezes them a little closer if I want it less I could take it down to 36 but I don't whoops sorry I'm gonna hit command C because I don't want to undo that I was gonna do this one instead I don't want them bumping into each other so my letters are bumping so if I come over here and I go 37 38 39 I want to see I need enough space where they're not bumping into each other maybe 42 works out pretty good okay so there's a little space but it's still tight that's called tight tracking okay I can take my six and scoot it over a little bit and what font am I in ah no wonder it doesn't look the same this is a minion pro font I want impact all right it changes the shape I'm gonna scoot this down if I want my six even bigger instead of 72 I anytime I'm typing I have to go to the T button so you're gonna be going back and forth between the T and the black arrow so the black arrow moves things it makes things bigger or smaller like boxes but if you're on if you're working with type and you make something bigger you have to make it bigger here now 72 is as big as it gets here but I can type in any number I want I'm gonna type in let's say 90 and see what happens that actually fills my space pretty good use my black arrow scoot it over I'm gonna use my up down arrows just kinda of line it up now if I want to see what it looks like with all these out without all these lines I can hit the W key if it's on that black arrow and the W is a preview button it's also this one down here you'll watch these you'll see them toggle back, toggle back and forth if you hit the W it's just a shortcut key so I can see hmm it looks like this might need to come up a little bit so I'm just gonna bump it up but I want to make sure anything that goes outside of that pink line will not be printed so I have to make sure I'm staying inside those lines but I can lift it up just enough so I don't bump into my boxes that looks pretty good okay now what I'm gonna do hit the button I'm gonna just hit W again so I can see my lines I need to select these boxes and fill them in with color now you may not have your swatches over here but if you click on this little drop down that says swatches you'll get the colors my box is selected because I hit on the edge of it with my black arrow and I'm just gonna start filling in color I'm gonna click on this one and I'm just gonna you know I'm not too picky about what colors I'm using I'm just gonna use the ones that are over here and click on this let's see maybe make that green and just kind of fill in your spaces um, maybe I want to repeat a color down here and this one maybe I want completely something different so if I do over here on the toolbar you'll see fill and you'll see stroke the stroke is the line around the box and fill is the color filling it in and right now it's saying there's nothing in that box but if I double click here I can get into the gradient and I can choose let's choose like this purple color and so I can fill in whatever color I like if I don't like it I just go back over here I can fill it with anything else I want so I'm gonna leave it because I you know I like it well enough okay um, I'm noticing I've got a bo my text boxes hanging down it really isn't gonna affect anything but it might get in my way so I'm just gonna lift it up so all right let's look over at our other grid and see how we're doing I need to put a picture and I need to put a fact now if you notice here this is in a separate box and this is in a separate box each of these three items are separated it allows me to move them independently of each other so I can make adjustments okay so I'm using separate text boxes so I can move things around independently let's go back to my thing I want to add a picture the the rectangle with the X is a picture box so I'm gonna make a box that fills about half of my space now in order to put something in here I'm gonna go file place 
and I have to find the file that I used. For me, it's on the desktop. I created a file called By the Numbers Graphics, and I clicked on this button here so I could see them as thumbnails. It makes it easier for, my, for me to find things. I'm doing something about the internet, so I want to use a picture of a computer. And I just remembered that this one that I used, I didn't like. It didn't fit very well. So I put a different one on my desktop. Oh, let me find it. Here it is. So I'm going to use this one. Now, as you can see, it's too big. It's not fitting right. So if I go Object, Fitting, I can fill the frame proportionally. I always use the proportional fit so it doesn't look stretched. And there it goes. Okay. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to use my black arrow and adjust that just a little bit down so I can see a little more of that graphic. So you can make the boxes a little bigger or smaller with the black arrow. All right, now I'm going to make a text box and I'm going to write my number in here. And if you look at the sheet that we had um, in our server about facts about the internet from Socktober, um, uh, let's see, I was doing something about 2 billion people use the internet. All right, so I'm going to put 2 billion in this box. I want it in impact font, and I'm going to put that size at 36. So I'm going to say, okay, I got to look at my number. How many was it? 2 billion. Okay, 2 billion. That number is going to stand alone because I want it to pop out. I want people to notice that number. Then I'm going to make another text box and I'm going to write the rest of the fact in there. People use the internet every day. Okay, wrong font, wrong size. So I've got it changed impact. And I want to take this up to about 24. And I'm going to use my black arrow and I'm going to scoot it up so they're close to each other. If I want to see what this is going to look like, I hit the W button. Okay, so I can move these around. I can, you know, adjust them if I need to. All right, let's take another, let's, let's copy this into another box. The easiest way to copy this size is if I take my option key and I drag across it allows me to copy these boxes so I can adjust this and then I go look for my next fact so let's go back over here what's the next fact um, 150 million pictures of food are posted every day on Instagram alright how did I look to see Okay, so in this case, I post, posted the idea of six or 350 million post pictures on the Facebook. It doesn't really matter what goes in what box. Some of them I put a picture with, some of them I didn't. Sometimes I put the little, I put the Candy Crush Girl here. I just kind of filled in my boxes. So let's go find your fact, whatever fact you want to use. Um, Let's do this. 350 million post photos posted. I gotta get in here with my three with my um, texting tool. Now this number, if I see this little red tab, that means my text is bigger than my box. If I stretch it out, I can see that this is too big. So I'm gonna go to T and highlight this, and instead of 36, let's make it. 30 and just shrink it down a little bit and um, and then let's just change the typing on the other one okay so you can make these a little bigger but we want them to pop out and they should be about the same size I'm using the same font on all of my boxes and let's see maybe let's put a picture in here um, go file place we'll just place a picture in there and maybe this time I want a picture of this food and it's not fitting so I go object 
fitting.